Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Connections and Directions, our University of Michigan Civil and Environmental Engineering podcast. My name is Michelle Santillian, and I am the CEE Marketing Communications Specialist and host of this series. During our podcasts, we are featuring members of our CEE community and how their work reflects our mission of engineers in service to society. We will be highlighting our strategic directions and our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. CEE's five strategic directions are human habitat experience, shaping resource flows, adaptation, automation, and smart infrastructure finance. I'm here today with CEE environmental student Renata Staruska, who's majoring in um, environmental engineering and is a PhD candidate. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here. How do you and other current students see yourselves participating in our strategic directions? Yeah, I think I think it's incredible just how much work is coming out of the CEE department. Um, I know sort of as a PhD student, I can get sort of holed into just my own research and maybe a couple neighboring lab groups, but it's really nice to see at, at large department events just how much research is happening and, and how many different directions people are going and how much is, is coming out of our department. And speaking of those directions and your own research, what are you doing specifically in your studies and how does that fit into CEE's broader vision? Yeah, so uh, my research is in wastewater treatment. Um, and so I'm working right now in anaerobic digestion of food waste and sewage sludge. Um, and we're sort of co-digesting that with a two-phase dynamic membrane system. So we're trying to make conventional wastewater treatment uh, less energy intensive by using a, a biological sort of biofilm membrane instead of um, membranes that typically require really high pressure and energy. Um, so trying to reduce those energy demands um, in wastewater treatment, which, you know, everyone needs wastewater treatment. <laughs> And for the layperson, what is anaerobic digestion? Yeah, so essentially we're, we're doing treatment without oxygen. Um, so typically um, there's sort of a, a treatment process that, that is with oxygen, and then there's sort of a secondary treatment uh, for more high solids that is without oxygen, and that's where you're producing your biogas, so your methane, um, and then we're trying to convert that to um, renewable natural gas, so then you can uh, be cooking on your stove with uh, your own <laughs> wastewater uh, products. So. so that's really shaping resource flows, then, if you had to identify a, one of our strategic directions. Is that what you would say? Yeah, definitely. And how does our mission of engineers in service to society resonate with you? Yeah, I think uh, sort of being more on the environmental side of things. Um, I know there was just recently the, the big spill in Ohio. And so thinking about sort of service to society, um, the Flint water crisis, I know there are professors in the department who have been involved in, in working with Flint on that. Um, so, you know, it's it's not just research for the sake of research but it's research for the sake of for the sake of helping people and you know we're we're providing a service to society we're not just trying to um learn cool things in our sort of ivory tower we're we're trying to really actively participate in society and and make the world a better place and how do you envision yourself becoming an engineer in service to society? Yeah, um, so I'm, re I'm really interested in sort of um, wash, uh, water sanitation and hygiene questions. Um, so looking at sort of developing areas or remote or rural areas and, and how I can sort of help with, um, especially for me, wastewater treatment there, but also drinking water is sort of a part of that. Um, and so I'm sort of interested in, in first maybe working at a national lab and sort of doing government funded research that's, that's really trying to help people um, and, and is sort of a little bit more applied, um, but really interested in solving those problems that people are facing every day. And how do you see DEI incorporated in the department, not necessarily specific to a class or a research area? Yeah, I think um, 
you know, it's just sort of becoming a more inherent thing. Um, and, and so, you know, I was, th- I was thinking about this question for a while and I was like, I, I don't know that I, um, sort of see it specifically in, in any like action that people are, are actively trying to take. Um, so much as just, you know, the friendships that are formed with people who are different and, and, realizing that, you know, people in my research group are first from so many different countries, um, from so many different continents, um, and just being able to hang out with people um, and, and make food for each other and, and share our culture and way of life. And, and I think that that's a really important part of the department. I think the department does really well with that. And why did you choose CEE at the University of Michigan. What would you say to prospective students considering applying here? Yeah, um, I mean, Michigan is great. I uh, it's February, so I uh, I joke that it's cold and dark. Um, not so much today, um, but I grew up in the desert, so it's a bit of a weather shift for me. Um, but the the research here is just outstanding. Um, I work with Lute Raskin and Steve Skirlos and they're phenomenal advisors. Um, and so just, just to be part of such a great research team. Um, I think the biotech group, especially just having, you know, these professors who are collaborating, not just within their own research groups, but across research groups and sharing lab space and sharing advice and wisdom. And, you know, there's just this culture of if I need advice uh, from Glenn Diger. I can just go knock on his door and like he'll probably have an answer to my question. Um, or if I want to ask Nancy Love something, I can just go and ask her. And, and even outside of, you know, my own advisors, there's just this culture of, of I can ask anyone anything. And even on the civil side of things, there are people who are doing these numerical analyses that I might need in wastewater research. And so I can go and be like, hey, Uh, I know it's not related to geotechnical things, but how would you solve a nonlinear second order partial differential equation? And, you know, people are happy to help and have those conversations. So it's just a really great culture here. And how has belonging to Green Peas enhanced your student experience? Yeah, Green Peas has been really great. I uh, kind of joined a little bit reluctantly, honestly. I was like, ah, I've got a lot of work. I've got a lot of other responsibilities. I don't know if I have time to be part of this organization. Um, But, you know, Greenpeace has been great. I uh, stressed a lot over the first couple of free bagel Fridays and trying to get everything set up. But um, just the the number of people that I've met just had very casual conversations with and, and being able to hear about everyone's research and feel like I really know people in the department has been really great. That's just, uh, I got back after winter break and like 20 people said hi to me the first day. And especially after the pandemic, it's just so nice to be able to like see familiar faces and not just faces in the building. For people who may not be familiar, could you tell us a little bit about Green Peas? Yeah, so Green Peas is uh, the Graduate Environmental Engineering Network of Professionals, Educators, and Students, uh, which is a very long name, and that's why we typically just call it Green Peas. Um, but we host uh, events mostly mostly in the environmental and water resource side, but also with the whole department, um, just for people to be able to network with each other, get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and we have some professional activities. So uh, we hosted the Anaerobic Digestion Conference here over the summer, and Greenpeace was able to host a networking event for young professionals at the conference. Um, and uh, I know in the past we've done happy hours with some of the seminar speakers. Hopefully we'll be bringing that back soon. Um, so just being able to really get to know the people in the department, get to know people in the field, um, and, and feel like you're part of a community here. Will you be doing anything with the board chart conference coming up this May? Oh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I haven't, I haven't thought about it yet, but yeah, we'll hopefully host another a similar young professionals networking event there. And likewise, would you be able to share a little bit with our audience what the Borchardt Conference is? 
it's it's a really great way for people to share their work. I know there's a really big presence of, of posters and presentations by people at the University of Michigan. Um, and so I think it's, it's great. It's free for students. Um, so it's a great way to just see what um, you know, your peers and colleagues are working on. And, and if it's your first conference, it's a great first conference. You'll see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of friendly faces, um, and, and just be able to, to see the research that everyone is doing. So I think it's a really good sort of first step into conferences if you're nervous about that. And if you have one pearl of wisdom from your own experience in CEE that you'd like to share with a prospective student, what would that be? Uh, make friends. I think uh, I knew that that sort of, for me, I'm a little bit more of an introvert, um, even if I might not seem so on uh, Free Bagel Fridays. Um, but I knew that moving to grad school, you know, was going to be really easy to just bury myself in my research and and you know watch tv or read books and and not make that effort to go out and meet people and so I tried really hard my first year to to meet my lab mates to meet other people in Ann Arbor and uh honestly if it weren't for those friends I don't know if I would have gotten through my first year um and so I, I definitely think just make friends with people in your research group with people in neighboring research groups and and definitely with people in Ann Arbor just go out and and meet people because you know that's that's what life is about we're we're engineers in service to society um which means you know we have to participate in society too we can't just be buried in our research all the time Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for listening to our podcast conversation. For more information about CEE at Michigan, please visit our website at cee.umich.edu. You can also reach our YouTube channel and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn pages from our website.